We should, you know what we should do? And you, I mean, it's not, it's not because I don't want It's not a reflection on you, Kendra. Oh, don't I feel like we should swap for this person, right? For like four minutes. Daisy chain it? You know what I mean? What? Four minutes. Is that the Daisy chain it? Yeah. 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 Don't applaud. Say your weird words about her outfit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the club club appreciates your abortion. Kendra, ladies and gentlemen. We need the microphone back for this uh, next uh, person, please. Okay. And here he comes. And here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. He Wrote on his name tag with uh, purposefully smudged Sharpie so we will never know his identity. Uh, sunscreen. User. <laughs> oh, that's him. Hello, oh, sunscreen. I'm Jackie. <laughs> I'd rub off on people. <laughs> We're all in this together, you guys. <laughs> Um, did you have another question you wanted to ask, or did yeah, you, you already know? nailed it once? So, well, uh, to be honest, I, at first I was thinking, boy, the thing, the follow-up would be, why are you guys so taking so long to talk about your parents? But you finally got there, so good for you. We're all, like this is very judgmental. We're only twenty-five minutes into a two hundred and fifty-minute set, <laughs> so. I, I have I am uh, an avocational performer and uh, I have uh, died on stage more than once. So could you recite some memorable flops in your uh, see ascension my, to these? Did you see my great garden story a little bit earlier? <laughs> your excuse. <yeah. laughs> I, I can I can start with uh, something very recent that happened to me. Uh, which is, I was hired to host a award show called the. Oh, I'm not going to remember it, but it was Emmys. The, the Emmys, yes. <laughs> it was a, it was an award show for uh, mixologists. It was like the industry uh, cocktail award show. And my job was very easy. Come the out. The <laughs> It basically was cocktease. Bravo. Excellent. It was really good, so I just felt like... Yeah, you're done. You know what? Bravo, Cameron Esposito. That deserves much more applause. That was great. <laughs> Frankly, shame on all of us for not coming to that one sooner. <laughs> So I was hired, yes, I was hired to host the cock tease, and I had... That's an amazing, I'm just going It is a great, great, I'm oh, so excited by that joke. Thank you very much, Cameron Esposito. Sorry, Michael, you want to tell a story? Uh, no, you can, because that... And the only, and I, I don't drink much, and I don't really have much material or any about alcohol, except for a old... Uh, little thing I used to do about only liking the kind of drinks that I like are girl drinks. The, the drinks commonly referred to as girl drinks. And I started talking about that and immediately got booed. And I was like, I know, like they're terrible, like I'm the asshole who likes those drinks. And I kept going. As it turns out, the the, 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 the group in attendance, the, the bartenders and mixologists, are a very socially aware group. And the idea of a girl drink was terribly offensive to them. And I had no idea. And uh, so I bombed so hard. And, and that was in the first three or four minutes of this evening. And then they hated me for the rest of the night. But the upshot is, they still had to pay me. Yeah. <laughs> Jackie, Jackie. And a question, which was, um, so when you used to do that story, like, because you, you had that old, it was an older bit, right? Mm -hmm. It's a classic problem where uh, the bit ages out of society. Yes, the mores had changed. Yes, and you, were, you, you do a callback and you're like, 
why am I saying this dumb word from a bit that I did in 1999? Oh, that's right, because it worked in 1999. Right. And you, and you're, but you're on the fly, so you just did it. That's right. Which is which? Incidentally, is why last year I stopped performing in blackface. Interesting. Interesting. Same I don't problem. Miss it. I don't miss it. I don't miss it. I think you're better. Without in, it, and honestly, you honesty, could drop the black from your name if you wanted to. <laughs> She's on a roll! It's an actual knee slap. <laughs> I slap my knee. Anyone else? Oh shit, I have eaten shit so hard in such funny situations. <laughs> I have like an opposite of that story though, which is that I don't, I really don't drink almost at all either. And I did, uh, this is just a silliness story really, not even so much bombing, but I was at Bonnaroo, which is like this huge music festival that's outdoors in Tennessee and it's very warm because it happens in the summer. And I went and performed at this festival and refused to take my jean jacket off even though it was 104 degrees because I was like, it's my gender! And I wouldn't take my jean jacket off. And I overheated. There was no food or water backstage, only vodka and literally piles of drugs. So I drank just a ton of vodka. And then you know when you're, you know when you're just like, I mean, I, I even got to the moment of going like, I turned to a comic, Kurt Brauneler, and just said to him, I'm having the best time! And then you know that stuff's gonna get very bad right after that. <laughs> right? And I, for some reason, was also wearing inflatable boxing gloves at that moment. You know what I'm saying. It was a whole thing. But I gave myself alcohol poisoning, and you have to perform. You actually have to perform. So I, so I, First of all, had to be taken to the medical tent in a, like a golf cart, but it had a siren on it, <laughs> which is humiliating. And I mean, I, I should have covered my face because you're, you know, it's drawing so much attention to yourself. But what was I going to cover my face with? The jean jacket I refused to take off? No. So I was just rolling through the festival with a siren going up above me. And, and, you know, just children, because everybody's like 18 and a half or younger, and then me, and I was like 35. Yeah. And At Bonnaroo, if they uh, get older than 18 and a half, they're killed. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I went to the medical tent, and they went like, what seems to be the problem? And I went like, Egh! and I threw up on the outside of the medical tent, which really <laughs> is amazing. And then when I went inside, the woman that was giving me an IV, she had a weight belt on and a, like a buzz, like a military style haircut. Yeah. But then when she turned around and walked away, she had a rat tail that was so long, it was going down her back and then tucked into her weight belt and it was coming out the bottom. And I want you all to know that even in my sickness, I did have the presence of mind to say, excuse me, how long have you been growing that? <laughs> rat tail and the answer was 25 years uh, then I had to have I have to say I really enjoyed the, the, the number of people in the audience who were uh, uh, opposed to the rat tail half of you are dressed like Padawans yeah right? it's true like, seriously it's true like oh rat tail no and I wasn't ashamed for rat before six crowd. yeah and how long did you date this woman yeah I mean we're still together today Butcher. Um, no. Wherever she may be. But I... <laughs> that was not even like... So it wasn't even a full-on bomb, except that then I had to go perform the rest of my set after, like, because they pay you. So I still... I had to... I had like a like a bandage on my arm from my IV that I had gotten and was in a t-shirt because I finally had taken my jean jacket off. And then my whole set was just a warning to all the kids. Like I couldn't stop being like, don't be like me. Find water. Take anyway, off your jacket. Yeah. Don't do piles of drugs. Weirdly, they haven't booked me back. I don't know why. The festival... 
hasn't asked me to come back. I've, you said that I had to finish my set, and I was like, did this happen in the middle of your 15 minutes? It happened between two sets. It happened oh, okay. between two sets. They would have given you a, an excusal for sickness, don't you think? I mean, I guess so, but I'm a badass. Right, that's no. right. Stand up, Tom, and you just keep going, right? You just go up. Just keep going. Speaking of which, John... Oh, I already answered. <clears throat> I've received the same medium warm reception on every set that I've ever done in my life. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. That was exactly right. <laughs> Literary humor, just warm chuckles, no matter what. Nothing too big, nothing too small. Just, I, I guided in slowly, no drugs backstage. Maybe a copy of, like, Will Be Gone. That's it. <laughs> Garrison Keillor did that for 45 years and worked out fine till the mm -hmm. very end. Too <laughs> <Jeff. Please do. laughs> Not soon enough. <laughs> Jackie, what's your story? I always destroy. <laughs> <laughs> no, um... No, I've, uh... I've eaten it any number of times. Um, right, the worst time that comes to mind, and this is dead serious, is after I did Last Comic Standing, the first season, there, um, I have never had stage fright. I've been nervous in life, because uh, I'm alive, but um, I never really had stage fright until I did Last Comic Standing, the first season, because there was a camera in your face for, it was a, it was a ridiculous amount of time. I think it was the second or third season. It was very early. And it was so much in your face, and there was a uh, the the segment producer behind the camera asking you, ask me between I don't know thirty and forty times a day for three days, what happens if you lose? If you don't win, what happens if you lose? And the first twenty times you say, well, I'm booked at you know hilarities in a couple of weeks. It's all going to work out. You know, yeah, I just get to keep doing stand up, and then it's like. Chinese water torture, it just, it, it, it was erosion, and you're like, I wonder what does happen. And plus, somebody, a different segment producer's like, oh, you're totally going to make the top ten. You're totally going to make the top ten. They're lying, and because uh, they've already cast it, and I'm not, and I was told later that I wasn't crazy enough, and um, I was like, but doesn't anybody That's want the hair? I know, because I can be super crazy. Um, <laughs> I was like, so whatever. I mean, the thing is, is it, 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 it did this, like, too, I felt like I was in a millstone. I literally was being ground to death. And so when I left the show, I had a corporate, this weird corporate, and uh, where you perform in front of a pile of haircuts and suits, right? And um, so I come out, and I, for some reason, space my set. And I've done it probably a handful of times since then, and it is... I literally, I, I, I feel a rage towards that show that I cannot, and then I did it two more seasons, because why wouldn't I stand in comedy? And, uh, but I, I, I froze, and, um, and I ate it so hard that uh, I had to, later I had to come up with a different policy of how to go forward from it. And it was, whenever I have stage fright now, and I get it sometimes, and it's, it's infuriating, but uh, if I physically move, it breaks a spell. So I literally am I'm standing there, and I'm frozen, and if I, if I physically just take a half a step or two steps to the left, because I don't really move much on stage, it's, it, it, um, it, it breaks a spell, and I can usually start thinking again. You've reminded me of something that happened to me that really isn't funny, but I thought it might be interesting for people who haven't had this experience and most likely at this point never will. Which is, I was invited to do the David Letterman show uh, as a guest. And like probably a lot of you, I grew up in awe of David Letterman. Uh, those of you who are younger may not probably relate to him the way I related to Johnny Carson when I was a kid, which is that he seemed sort of like an institution and maybe a little bit of a curmudgeon and, and, and maybe even not that funny. But when, when I was in my teens and 20s and into my 30s, it, it, it was worship. I mean, he, he really redefined 
that genre. And so when I was invited to go on, it was, for me, the only time in my life that I felt like really starstruck. And I just, I, I was underprepared, and I remember that the weird sensation was being introduced by Biff, the stage manager, who really is the stage manager, and, and I walked out and had, for the only time in my life, had tunnel vision, where I was utterly unaware of anything else that was going on around me. All I could see was David Letterman's giant orange face <laughs> approaching me. I wasn't even approaching him. I had no sense of where the band was. I had no sense of where the audience was. And I sat down and talked to David Letterman, and I don't think got a laugh for seven minutes, and walked out of there <clears throat> devastated, because I had been so in awe. And I remember that moment of him looking at me and kind of leaning back, and in my mind his subtext was, yeah, this guy sucks. <laughs> so now, as I said, not funny, but maybe interesting if you've never been on the David Letterman program. No, that's, that's super interesting, and I wonder, did you ever watch it on TV? Oh, God, no. Did, no, only because I wonder if it played how you thought that it played. Well, I've seen people do badly on those television shows, and I know as somebody watching, I never think to myself how terrible that person is. I never have that thought, but I can imagine they feeling very critical of themselves leaving, in particular for a comedian. I wasn't doing, I wasn't doing stand-up, I was just doing stand sit panel, you know, where you sit and you talk to a guy, and it was just devastating. I mean, television's amazing, though, because this has, for some reason, feels tangentially related, that I was taping... Did you guys know Ferguson? That, that, no, not even the Ferguson thing. That was, was amazing. Really positive. Yeah, that was a really positive experience. Uh, no, I was taping something for the Carson Daly, Whatever his like late the thing that's like the last, last call yeah the la last yes call. the last call with Carson Daly and you taped stand up live um, at the Ice House in Pasadena in Cal in outside of Los Angeles and then they would mix that in with a package that's you being a talking head being like yeah I'm just like a pretty funny person and then it would just like cut to you on stage <laughs> telling a joke and the yeah it's just really funny cut to I cut to here's an example about work. Um, but the particular night that I, this is when I was like, oh, television is bullshit and amazing and also bullshit. Uh, the particular night that I taped the stand-up portion, there was just a regular audience. Like it wasn't, the audience didn't know there was a TV taping prior to buying tickets, but then they found out and there were signs everywhere and there were cameras, but they weren't like vetted. They weren't excited to be there. And I was on stage and a dude in the audience straight up stood up and called me a dyke in the middle of my set. This happened, and then I just didn't know what to do, so I just like started again, which by the way is the worst thing that you can do. I just went like, no, I'm Cameron Esposito. I just started the whole thing. So that guy's like, this dyke is here, and the rest of the audience is like, wait, this sad dyke, you know, like, and then also I'm just telling the same jokes they've just heard. They're going badly, like, what do you even believe with this haircut? And they're just like, she just did this. Like, it was the weirdest thing. Did he then yell, Zyke, at the same exact moment? No. That's a great question. It was an infinite recursion. His friends, like, pulled him down. Even the room didn't, like, pull him down. That's what for. Yeah. His friends, like, pulled him down. I somehow finished the set, and then I went out of the room, and I was just like, Oh my god, like you can't air that on television. And the producers were so nice and they were like, Don't worry, you are gonna look amazing. We're gonna edit all of that out. And really, like you if you have a chance, it is the funny you should watch this because the the final version is absolutely me like basically spinning around and being like, I'm a star and then like just cuts to like cuts to like audience members laughing, like definitely from different days. <laughs> Like they somehow, it's like, it's like they, they, 
They Frankenstein like a bunch of words. It's amazing, because basically they were saying to you, don't worry, we just recruited some uh, nobodies from a mall to sit in this audience, yeah. one of whom assaulted you. Right. We'll take care we'll of it. We'll take care of it. Now you can trust You're going to look great. Did you, I have a question. Uh, did you guys ever um, do a set on TV where they didn't ask you what the material was? Where you didn't have to provide what the material was going to be? Because I've done two where they were like, you're, just, you're doing seven minutes, right? As they're walking me to stage. Who? Who was this? What was it? What, what show? Um, late, uh, it was called Late Friday or something. At least okay. Line Gang booked it in like 99, 2000. And Bart Coleman was walking me to stage. He's like, so it's seven minutes of TV clean, right? <laughs> sure. That's all I've ever aspired to in college. <laughs> and he said, yeah, you're doing, you're doing, I mean, you can do probably seven to ten, but we're, we're going to probably cut it down to seven. So it's, but it's TV clean. And I said, yeah. And so I go up, I do my set, and then I asked if I could do it again, because I saw people got to do it twice, and I needed the $400. And so, uh, I, and so Bart, again, walking me to the stage, looks at me and goes, it's a different seven minutes, right? You did it, you're not going to do the same as last show, right? It's like, no. No, I'm... It's a television. You're taping it. You're, you're going to show it. Yeah, but I, but I loved the respect that it sort of was, where it was like, nobody, they were like, you're an adult. This is your job. You know that you're supposed to do stand-up comedy. You know the premise of television stand-up, which is TV clean and not the same fucking set that you did three months earlier. And I was like, yes. And I, I mean, I was kind of fascinating that nobody ever asked me it was, it was simultaneously a gesture of respect and disrespect. Right, well, uh, disrespect for their own job. Right. And respect right. for me. Yeah, yeah right. it's great. Like, well, you, you're going to carry this, but we don't care what you're doing. Right. Right. So we're all making $400, is what they probably thought. <laughs> Jackie, did you ever do Comics Unleashed? I did. I did. Do, and they didn't ask me on that one either. That's did they a ask funny you on one. yours? No. For no. those of you who don't know, Comics Unleashed is a late night syndicated infomercial of comedy hosted by Byron Allen, who is an immortal man. He used to be a host on Real People when I was a tyke, and now is hosting this show where basically stand-up comedians come in and he sets them up to do their bits in a kind of semi-circle, pretending to have a conversation environment. It would be like if Highlander had a show. <laughs> Have, have either have either of you ever done it? I, I have. So I did it right when I first moved to LA. And what's amazing about it is, so like John was saying, it's somebody in conversation, and he cues you like, "So I've heard you have a haircut or whatever," and then you're like, "I have a haircut." <laughs> it's a story. Hey, just out of the blue, you ever play Bonnaroo and have a sickness? yes? <laughs> yep. Yes. It's exciting. But this is a thing you might not know that is unreal. So he's, like, there's a camera on each person that's there. Like, everybody has their own camera. So he doesn't need to be, like, there's not a master shot that he needs to be clean of that they're going to use. So after you say your bit, yeah. he just says out loud, applause, 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 applause. <laughs> applause, 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 applause. He just says it for the whole thing. And nobody prepared me for this before I went out there. And I was like... Wait, are you fucking kidding me with this? Like, this is what's gonna happen? So wait, there's no audience? There's an audience, there's a live audience. And so he's talking to you and they're, and he's like, Michael, such and thus. And then you say your like, anecdote, and then he goes, applause, 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 applause. To the audience, to tell them to clap. Oh, they can't afford an applause sign? They, I don't know why they don't have an they applause didn't. sign. They didn't do that, I did it probably. Three years ago. Base You've never seen him? You didn't see him do that? Um, this is just something I saw? No, they have an applause sign now. Your episode is what earned them the money to get that applause sign. By the way, applause, 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 applause. applause. Right? Right? That's where you look to the camera and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please clap.